Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Board Masters with me, Chris Mullins, and tonight I'm going to be unboxing Townsfolk Tussle by Panic Roll. Uh, one of the very few, I think, first creators that I've backed so far on, on Kickstarter, because generally the games I tend to back are a bit more high profile, I guess, just because I'm a bit new to the hobby. And this one has been one I have been so excited for ever since I first saw it advertised, largely because of the art style. And you should be able to see it a bit better once the plastic's off. It is absolutely stunning, I think. If you've seen Cuphead, for example, you'll be very familiar with it. That sort of 1930s-esque cartoon with a bit of darkness in, in the artwork you can sort of see with these characters there and yeah just I love the look of everything about this game and it actually looks like the gameplay matches up from it from everything that I've heard so far and from everything that the content uh, creators were saying during the campaign so we've obviously got this first box right on top all of these gorgeous minis See if we can get into here. So we've got these ruffians. I mean, they look... Oh, I didn't realise the door was open on the uh, evil bank woman. I mean, they look super cool. And obviously the infamous guy with all his hands. And just a very intimidating evil policeman type. Who I guess is going to be your maybe some sort of rival for the sheriff position because the story of townsfolk tussle was the last uh, sheriff was brutally murdered and you're teaming up with the other villagers to fight off these ruffians who are coming in to take over the town and you know whoever does the best job becomes the next sheriff we've got the very cute little crazy dog ruffian that was part of the, the kickstarter exclusive one Got the evil scarecrow and this really like cool, I don't know how to explain it, almost like a pogo stick with a cape, which is pretty interesting. And then the king and queen. And I think this, this guy is just a normal guy who happened to wander into town and got mistaken for a ruffian, which I think is very funny. I don't know if I've got room to fit them all on there. Let's see. Well, I won't fit these two. Crazy girl with her daggers who, you know, I'm wearing a My Hero Academia t-shirt. She very much reminds me of the the villain in there who likes tasting people's blood and then can then control them. And that guy looks really, really cool as well. It's like three heads in a wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow's got its own face as well. Lots of skulls on the base. And then we've got these pretty cool characters. I mean, they've done a great job on these minis, to be fair. They look quite simple on the campaign page, but there's actually a really good amount of detail and depth and things on there to make them look really awesome and they've got a nice chunky feel which I actually really like some people might I guess uh, some people might not I should say but I do really appreciate them feeling a bit meaty and chunky and I don't know what that gap there is for but those minis look very very cool indeed obviously we've got all the names of the backers on this board somewhere. I can't remember if I did the channel name or my own name. I'll have a quick look, see if I can spot it. All these gravestones around the town. And I think this is a really cool touch. Of, I think I mentioned it when I was on the podcast with the silver coin guys that they asked what sort of stretch goals and things I liked in particular. And anything that names you in the book or anything like that is a big winner for me. No, I can't see it. 
Who knows? Right, I'll have another check. So the Townsfolk Tussle Rules and Results booklet. Again, the beautiful art style carries right through everything. A really, it's a really nice looking rule book actually. The, the colours and everything is really well presented. The colour palette is really well chosen to make all the important bits pop out. Obviously there's a lot going on because it's like a a boss battler basically, like a, a Kingdom Death, just a thing with a much simplified stages outside of the combat and not quite so brutally difficult. Although if I remember rightly, I think it was really, really difficult during the campaign. People said it was very difficult at two, two solo and two. And it got a lot easier at three and up. But I might be remembering it the other way around. It may be that it gets harder from three upwards, I can't tell. Oh, so we've got different results. So based on what sort of score you get, I guess, that tells you if you've won or not. Okay, so we bow our heads to those who perish, take a moment to absorb their final words. I can't see myself there, so maybe it wasn't for all backers, maybe you had to back at a certain threshold to get that. I can't remember off the top of my head. If it was an extra pledge level that I didn't go to, I, I'm kicking myself a bit now because I do love that sort of thing. And yep, yeah, that's just more results. But to nice terrain guide, critical hits. Yeah, so you've got the town phase when you're buying things, the fight phase, and then on ruffians defeat, you move on from that. I think this is gonna be the map of the, the town. Oh, I didn't expect it to be in full color. That's really cool. I might have to find somewhere to put that up on the wall, to be honest, because that is gorgeous. And then we have got all the various tokens, so all these bits of terrain that go on the map and you can interact with, like I imagine you can set bees. I know you can start the car and it will drive across and hit anything in its path. What else have we got? Got the, obviously the money, the farm, and all the character tokens and things. And again, more of the terrain. So I think in the like barn, there's someone, depending on what you roll, there's like a farmer hiding in there and he can either sell you stuff or take a shotgun blast at the, the ruffian. So they all have different impacts and different effects that are gonna impact each game differently. So you've got forests, more sort of weapons and things, I guess. The standees, so if you want to play with standees, and the art style again on those is absolutely gorgeous. It's probably the first game since The Great Wall where I actually like the standees almost as much as the minis. And then, oh, this is the, the peddler board, which I think goes down the side of the board. So when you're in the town phase, all the shopping comes up on here. You have the option to buy the new gear and things. And then you flip it over for the fight phase and it sort of walks you through it and you can track the ruffian movement and the ruffian health. Let's create, try and create a bit of space here. So we can have a look at this board. go and again it's not the most detailed beautiful board but once you start getting all the terrains on here that you can then interact with and if you saw the kingdom death unboxing you can sort of see obviously the similarities with the grid based movement and things so you're going to have up to four people on this board with all the terrain moving around interacting battling this big ruffian in the same sort of vein as kingdom death and you're working together to try and take down the ruffian so we've got nice storage for when all the tokens are popped out. We've got these very good quality player boards by the look of them. Anything dual layered is a winner for me. I don't know if that opens. I think that's going to be a nice job.
I don't know, just noticed the flap at the bottom. I've just destroyed that little case, but that shouldn't be a problem because they sit in the box nicely. So this is obviously your character board. So Yancey Plover, Henlo Bulwark, who I really like his ability, Headless Chicken. Each the first time you would be knocked out, you survive with one HP uh, <laughs> because chickens can survive without the head, obviously, uh, as the legend goes. Certainly some of the head anyway, as long as enough is left of the spinal cord. Georgie Iron Gut, Blopsy Twins, Norman Fishboy, Granny Melba, and Quintus Binch, which for some reason always sounds like a very risky and naughty name to go with, even though there's not really any, any swear words in there, but it just sounds like it should be something naughty. Maybe that's just me. All right. I will look a bit harder for the flap this time. It's at the bottom, that's why it took me. And these are your ruffians. So Pepin Milkfrog, the Bundits, Samuel Strawman, Umbrello. Umbrella, that was the word I was trying How could I not think of Umbrella? Virginia Fitz, Will Barlow. Yeah, he looks really cool. Like the grave digger type thing. Uh, King and Queen. Deputy Wagams. Lawman Dozy. Hansy. Penny Pinchetti. And Bort Dovis. And again, I love the fact they all have their own little laws. They all have their own abilities and everything, their own stats. So every fight's going to be different. Then they also have different powers depending where you're meeting them in the campaign. So in a campaign, you're trying to beat four ruffians and they come out in random orders. So the first one, they're chump difficulty. So generally they will have nothing special. Then there'll be the hooligan where they gain an extra ability, then a troublemaker where they get even more powerful. And then the final fight, they basically have their own different rules uh, as far as I am aware. What else have we got in here? Oh, the peddler. Nice screen printed bags. I do really like them. If you know, watch the channel, you know I do like a bag. They are just some lids, so I'm not going to take them out. Clips for the standees. Some very cool dice. Nice, yeah, D10s, I like the look of those. They're just some tokens. I'm not sure what they are related to. These are the starting gears, which are going to be linked to each of the characters. So you could sort of tell from the, the character designs themselves. Like I think Lazy Plover is an anvil. So his starting gear is, oh, these are just actually dividers, which make it a bit easier when you're sorting things. And I think these are much the same. So they give you a bit of information. So they have different terrains for the final fight. They have their own gear, which I think you can pick up if you if you kill them or defeat them and then use it to make your own gear, town events and terrain deck. So yeah, more dividers, which are always really welcome. Uh, I think villagers is probably my favorite use of dividers so far. It makes set up and tear down so much easier. And this box is certainly wedged in. Ooh. And that's it for the main box. So let's pop that out of the way. And cards, cards, and more cards, as we can see. And there certainly is plenty of cards in here. So what do we have? There we go. I, again, these tabs on these card decks that they have this little gold strip, which always tells me there's a tab, but I can never find it. Okay, so we've got gear, chest gear, and again, Hero Shield, very clearly inspired by Zelda. Sharp and clear. I love the sense of humor that's through it all as well. So. 
pearly sharp, so sharp pair of teeth. Jingling blood sucker, so it's a big syringe. Concert ticket. And again, for right through the campaign, for all the communication, everything had such a great sense of a singing sword, cup of milk. Just It just makes me want to smile. Just the art style, the sense of humour, everything about this game looks and just feels fun and colourful and charming. Mr. Horseman, leg gear, gaudy vest, marksman's musket. Um, what do we have? Milkman's hat. Oh, I think these are Pepin the Frog's gear. And then, yeah, the bandits. So these are the the ruffian gear. Scarecrow's pole. I don't like the look of being stabbed by that. Umbrella's cape and his spring. So, yeah, these are going to be things that obviously you can harvest from the ruffians as you beat them. I guess you may have to do certain things to cut bits off them or something, perhaps, and that unlocks them for you and then special gear smelly bait gooby shovel orb of violence orb of life oh more more teeth fresh cake that's probably going to be oh jerry the cat that's definitely going to cause some trouble push something off the table i would imagine and then yeah the sheriff's gear ah oh, just all oh, looks great And I think this actually was under under a hundred dollars. I think it was in the eighty to ninety range, plus shipping, obviously, which is an absolute bargain for me. It I was expecting it to be pushing two hundred when they between the announcement and the stuff that they'd unveiled before the campaign. That how great everything looked, and. You know, just lots and lots and lots of gear. The minis look great. Everything about it just screamed premium product. Yes, they'll have a basic pledge where you maybe have three or four ruffians and then there'll be the all-in with all the extra characters and everything else. I mean, you just see the, the amount of gear and everything. I mean, about in a finicky grenade, shin guards. Butterfly Nectar, Rhythmic Drum. I mean, it's just lots and lots and lots and lots of great stuff. White Flag, Showdown Boots, a Pea Shooter. And, you know, we've got even more gear here, I think. Oh, OK, no, this looks some slightly different. That looks like uh, an achievement. Or I don't know if achievement's the right word or sort of goals that you need to do in battle to get bonuses. So being reckless, you end your turn adjacent to the ruffian. And if you achieve this, you get coins or extra damage. And you can also get points, which I guess work towards who is rated the best sheriff. Uh, rowdy loud bloodshedder. If you attack on each of your turns this feat, this fight, achieve this feat. So six coins and three points. If another townsfolk consumes a consumable during a fight, then you achieve it uh, as a weight watcher. And yeah, lots of different things. These are obviously going to change how you play from fight to fight, which is going to add so much variation because there is a huge amount of those. Picky patron, if the peddler shop is reset, achieve the feat. Dodge the bullet if you're involved in a tie. Complete a fight with none of your starting gear equipped. Land the final blow. So, so much going on in that pack. And then we've got these bigger cards which are obviously going to be more related to what you as a character and the ruffians can do so you've got the cheat sheets which are always welcome love a player reference and then these are going to explain how the the terrains can be used so old jalopy the car won't start nothing happens move the old jalopy forward until it collides with the terrain piece all characters take three damage and i think there may even be like objectives where you hurt your your partners as well so you can use the terrain to hit the ruffian and anyone else mushroom go grave so you can eat a mushroom could be bad could hit restore your health or send you on a psychedelic rampage so again all of these <laughs> foul outhouse you may attack the foul outhouse to deal two damage to all characters within two squares of it you still must make an accuracy roll 
Uh, okay. And then you've got different events and secrets. And again, this is going to be things that happen in between battles. These secrets can reward you with gear and things. And yeah, there's just so much going on. It is like Kingdom Death a bit lighter and a bit more accessible, which is, again, a large part of the attraction for me because Kingdom Death is very intimidating, even more so now I've got my hands on it and unboxed it. But yeah, I mean, look how many town events we got. That's a crazy amount of events and secrets. And it's still going. I can't, This whole pile is town events. I mean, how many games are you going to have to go through to have any chance of seeing all of those. That's insane. I mean, credit to them for putting so much into it, but especially for the cost, it's a pretty mind blowing amount of content for the price, as I as I touched on earlier. And then what have we got? We've got, oh, these are the, the AI decks. So King and Queen with the hilt back, Bash will target the closest townsfolk, move towards the target. If they reach them, deal one damage. If they're three or more on the board, King's hit leaves your wrist battered and bruised. The target must unequip a weapon of their choice. Otherwise, they take additional damage. Uh, and again, you can see it. that is a decent amount of cards for each AI. Certainly compared to the games I've played so far, where they're a much smaller deck, so you can get through them quite quickly. But again, you've got these for each and every ruffian. And as I said, you're only going to get four ruffians per campaign. And I think there's what, one, ten, ten ruffians, twelve ruffians. So, so much going on there. And they're all very well themed. That Penny Pinchetti is all about taxing and things like that. And the lore and the, the flavor text is just great fun. Bought Davis, trip and slip. Bought trips over his own shoes while taking a photo. How embarrassing. Uh, moves towards the closest town folk. Bought topples over, slowly returning to his feet. He seems quite unfazed compared to the target flattened beneath him. Bought takes a damage while the target suffers too. Selfie with the locals. So, yeah, I mean, it's all... He's definitely a tourist who's just stumbled into it and got into a fight and is just accidentally killing everything. <laughs> through his own sort of incompetence. Blood will flow, it's Will Barlow. So again, this is probably going to round out the rest of the ruffian AIs. Critical hit guide. You want to be landing those. And then, yeah, Pepper Milk Frog. Jug Crush, Tongue Slap, Milky Moat. So again, all themed around him being a frog milkman. Uh, the Bundits. Did they actually plan this out or did they just decide to collectively bully you? Tiny Thieves. <laughs> Samuel Strawman, Hopping Poke, Snip Snip, Send in the Crows. I don't know why, I find Samuel Strawman probably the most scary. The sort of creepy, dilapidated scarecrow with his giant pair of shears just freaks me out a bit. Whereas Umbrello, I don't find intimidating in the slightest, but that may change once we're at once he's springing after me and stabbing me with the end of his umbrella. Although Virginia Fitz just looks like that delightful, psychopathic, murderous girl that anime and things very are very fond of. And obviously Harley Quinn, I guess, has taken that to the next level. But that is everything that is in the core box just the core box of Townsfolk Tussle, which is coming out with an expansion later this year, which astounds me really what, how much we can expand on this. But I am even more excited for this now that I've opened it up. It's been an interesting journey because I was so hyped for it. And then for us UK backers, it kind of got lost in transit because of a mistake. And it was sort of part, something that I'll talk about in the psychology of shipping video, which will have already gone up by the time this comes out. So it sort of got disappeared into the ether and my hype cooled down a lot for it. And then I had a mystery 
email telling me that my parcel would be arriving and I had no idea what it was because I hadn't had a dispatch notification and it just happened to be Townsfolk Tussle which was like the best day ever because you know the amount of times you get those mystery dispatch emails and it just turns out to be I don't know cat food or something like that and then but to cut to come out and answer the door and to find this glorious box outside was super exciting and I cannot wait to get this to the channel obviously we've got a bit of a backlog with the three player games at the moment because we've well we've done Nemesis recently we're working through in too deep then we've got Petrichor then this although I might do Petrichor two player we're, we're working that out but Please comment down below if you want to see this on the channel. Uh, I mean, it will definitely hit the channel. It's just whether we do the full campaign of all four ruffian fights or we just do one and done. But I'm hoping we can do all four. But that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Look after yourself, stay safe and have a good one. Bye bye now.